Essendon Football Club invited Fox Footy Channel to spend three days with the Bombers on their crucial trip to Adelaide to take on the power. For the next 30 minutes, we're the unofficial 23rd player, sharing every minute with the team. With unprecedented access to the Bombers, we'll discover just exactly what does go on when an AFL club goes on the road. So strap on your seatbelt and see the Bombers fly up. They might have arrived in enemy territory, but there are still some bomber supporters at the Adelaide airport as the players arrive. As they all wait for their bags, it's a chance to check what's going on in Adelaide. Or let people at home know they've arrived safely. There's no heavy luggage for the players, but for 80 killer friendy in the team, looks like their luggage has taken up nearly half the plane load. It's straight to Amy Stadium for the team's final training session, and Sheeds instantly finds some new friends. Come on, what's going on here? Uh, who's, my, who's the champion? Tell me the champion. Yeah. You are, you are. Yeah. Yeah. Two. What community are you from? Amada. 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 Where's Lloyd? Lloyd. Yeah, I want to shake his hand. I want to meet him. Where's my hand? Lloyd, Lloyd. Lloyd and He's coming. In all the excitement of seeing their heroes, they miss Lloydie as he slips away. They do catch Hurd. The fact Hurd is here is starting to cause quite a stir because he wasn't named in the team because of his hamstring injury. As the players prepare to head out for the session, it's a very relaxed atmosphere. go out there's one player left in the rooms it's Kepler Bradley and Sheeds corners him to tell him the daunting news he's got the job on Warren Treadray tomorrow night that's right I mean, it's nothing, I mean, that's all you want to say to your, your, your whole country is you just try things and have a crack at things and have a go and apply yourself and work hard and all those sorts of things are what Kepler Bradley's about so um, He's got ability naturally, but uh, it's one of his strengths is he puts a fair bit into his body and a fair bit into his effort. As the discussion finishes, the players come back in. The mood becomes serious as the main man issues the instructions to his players. As the training session officially gets underway, Sheets has a date with the Adelaide Press. They've all seen Heard with his teammates and they're dying to know why. We all like a few games in footy and James Heard's out there having a run with the rest of his teammates. That's exciting. Well, it is. He's captain of the club. He's come out of the game. It's a very important game for us. How close is he, Very close. Even though Hurdy's he's training, he's definitely not playing. He'd already been on the training track at Windy Hill this morning to test out his hammy, and now he hardly gets out of a walk as he supports his teammates. But Sheeds has left the door open that Hurdy might play and they all walk right through. Now we all know of course Heard wasn't named in the Bombers squad so if he is to play the club would have to pay a hefty fine but it makes you wonder is Kevin Sheedy up to his old tricks? He's not worried about paying fines. Andrew Lovett missed training on Wednesday and was instead at home in bed with tonsillitis. Today he's restricted to kicking goals and nothing else but everyone is sure he will play. If we're right, he just um, well on the train too hard there's really nothing of him left. He walked past me, I'd rather than see him. That's pretty thin. The session, which has attracted quite a bit of interest from almost everyone at the ground, is all wrapped up in 45 minutes. Lovey spent more energy signing autographs than kicking the footy, 
and has also found some new friends. That is, until Sheedy comes along again. Now, what are you talking about, you guys? Hey, oh, he's a great little player, isn't he, hey? A little massage, yeah. He's from the Christian community. Melbourne. Mike. What do you want to see about that spell? Yeah. You don't think I'm spell by name? <laughs> you give me a hard time, aren't you? Hey? Watch your hand. Oh, head down, baby. Yeah, watch your hand. I'm a white guy, but I've got eyesight too, you know. Yeah. I got good vision. I'll give you a smile, all right? No worries. No worries. Oh, oh, you want to get oh, oh, better luck, do you? Yeah. Now you got to talk Irish if you talk to me. Don't talk that bloody Australian language. I'm Irish, all right? 67. We don't want to know your weight. Or your age. From the ground, it's to the team hotel in the middle of town. And the frenetic pace of the day doesn't stop there. Each player is assigned to their own room. And after a quick freshen up, it's into the all-important team meeting. Sheeds quickly transforms himself from the joker to a senior AFL coach. And you can see the difference with just a very quick glance. This is where a week's worth of planning is conveyed to the playing group by the coaches. It's when the team is finalised, what role each of the 22 players will have, and a reminder of the ramifications of what a win or a loss will have on the team. And most importantly, it's where all the tactics are discussed. Got a couple of boundary line throwings, a couple of centre bounces, a couple of ball ups. We're only allowed to film 10 minutes, but quickly you can sense the serious nature of the meeting. As the meeting continues, on the TV, all the talk is about Heard. Looks like Sheedy has fooled everyone. Now, Kevin Sheedy is up to his old tricks on the eve of Essendon's clash with Port Adelaide. Meanwhile, Essendon coach Kevin Sheedy has hinted James Heard could play against Port Adelaide tomorrow night. A spare function room in the hotel is transformed into a multi-purpose base camp for the team. There's all sorts of different food on offer for dinner. The players don't hold back in helping themselves. After dinner, it's the players' time. So we arm Justin Murphy with a camera of his own to find out exactly what's going on. The H2O, Mount Franklin. Hydrating, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you get the old glucose in with the old the naturals. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's half time at the moment, so uh, this is when I call people from home and ask them how they're going. I may as well start doing myself. <laughs> Second, yeah, on the list. Uh, he's had a bad night. He sat there with a cold bowl of spaghetti. For <laughs> yeah, how was your meal anyway, Lordy? And then he no, got... look at him. Look at him now. No, you'll go near him. What have you done, Matthew? How was your How was your meal, Lordy? Uh, pretty ordinary, man. <laughs> so, Sheed, is this uh, your normal match preparation? Uh, this kind of stuff. Man. I just want to hang in here and find out what you guys are talking. Plus, I don't want my steel heel to get rusty. <laughs> <laughs> it's the morning of the game and gradually players start emerging from their slumber for breakfast and like last night's dinner menu nothing's spared in giving the players all sorts of different things to eat from cereal and fruit to bacon and eggs and pancakes the coach is one of the first to eat breakfast since he reads the paper about himself and his own propaganda. After breakfast, the players have got six hours to fill before they head off to the ground. Solly, Welshy and Spike muck around in Solly's room, their new favourite drink. Got me a cool day. Keeps the doctor away. But it is the time the players find frustrating, sitting around and simply waiting. I don't even know. Well, I generally sort of try to sleep in a fair bit to about 10 o'clock and get down and have some breakfast and then come back up, lay down for about probably another half an hour and um, I actually try and get to the beach if we go to interstate and there's a beach around and jump in the water and just freshen up so it just fills the day in a bit as well so you might have some lunch down at Gamelg as well and then get back and get ready. If you're back at home you can go and see mates and, and um, family and that sort of stuff but when you're over here you've sort of got to um, 
try and try and kill time without using too much energy and without sort of thinking of the game because you sort of play it in your head 500 times before you get there and you're pretty stuffed before you even get to the game. Swaggy, what's going on, mate? Yeah, 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 we'll get down the beach. Just walking the water and stuff. Yeah, right. met in the four in about five. Smokey joins the trio as Solly hijacks the team van as they head down to Glenelg. Shopping becomes the major focus for the boys. Anything, it appears, kept their mind off tonight's match. Do you want a mirror, mate? Do you want a mirror? <laughs> you got four? <laughs> You don't want to be thinking about the whole game today. I mean, when it comes closer to the, the actual start of the match, you'll start thinking about those sort of things. But just now, just relax and uh, just enjoy the day. I think you know about analyse the game and um, you know start the nerves a bit earlier than what you probably should, and um, probably don't. You know, it can affect your game sometimes. You, in the end, it's just a game of footy, and you go and have a bit of fun. They get back just in time for what will be their last meal before the match. <laughs> As fitness guru, John Quinn makes sure everyone is eating the right things. We choose what we have on, on meals. I'm probably more concerned when we have a buffet style like this that they eat too much. So uh, I suppose I'm a bit of the food police in that regard. I look to see who goes back two or three times to, uh, to have, have something to eat. And uh, look, you've also got to make sure that they like the food. If, it, if it's not that good and they're not eating enough, then they'll tend to wander outside to get their food. After Kepler's finished his lunch, he reflects back to what Sheedy said to him before training yesterday. Just basically said, when you when you get back to the hotel, get he, get Warren Treadrow's videotape and just see what he does, see where he leads and how he marks the ball and what, what his best attributes are. So, um, yeah, I've done that and uh, pretty much studied him up, so just waiting to go tonight. Was it a sleepless night? Uh, no, I slept quite good, actually. Um, yeah, I like to stay up as long as I can and then uh, sleep during the day and wake up, have lunch and not have to worry about it so uh, I've done that and um, I'm starting to think a little bit about it now. Straight after lunch most players head back to their rooms for some quiet time before they head to the game. In Lovey's room well, he's just starting to feel the nerves. He's only played six senior games but after five goals last week he's quickly becoming one of the most talked about players at Essendon and it's something he's struggling to come to terms with. No celebrity. No, five goals, probably, I don't think I'll kick five goals ever again. I was a bit lucky the other week, probably in the right spot, just keep my feet firmly planted, which it is, it's not going to, you know, get, get too out of control and, you know, like only because I'm kicking five or whatever and playing okay, you know, I haven't changed for nobody, just still same old me now, just relaxing. Some of the other boys are spending the last hour in the hotel spa and for the first time today, they start talking about the specifics of the clash. Is that a if they're not getting any drives and up for get it in, they'll be hard for each other. The game is getting close. You can feel the tension. There's no joking around now. The game faces are on. Already some of the players are getting taped for action as the focus quickly shifts to the night ahead. And with the last minute instructions, it's onto the bus as the anticipation builds. Oh, when you start getting ready to get on the bus and um, you really, really got to start thinking about the job and the people you, the guys you got to play on. So I think that's the main time you go down, do your hydration tests and um, then it starts kicking in from there because you're just about ready to go. The boys usually are sort of pretty quiet as you get onto the bus, but you, that's when you sort of know that they're ready to go. And uh, they're just thinking about what's going to happen, what, the, what their role is in the, in the side tonight and uh, all those sorts of things. falls into the same spot as it did yesterday, but this time it's straight to the rooms. The clock's ticking, the battle's close. The first of the team meetings start as the defence gets together and listens to Dean Wallace. Meanwhile, in another room, Gary O'Donnell talks to the midfield and the forwards with specific instructions. There's still many people at the ground thinking the skipper's going to play, even though it was never contemplated. It's all part of a cunning, sheedy plan. Yeah, I think she just presented with an opportunity he couldn't refuse, you know. He loves the uh, he loves the games and all that sort of stuff. And as I said, it wasn't intentional. I think that um, he was just presented with an opportunity that, you know, he couldn't refuse. As the players come out of their last meeting, this time with Sheedy, they have the next 45 minutes to themselves.
players prepare, each of the coaches go around and talk to players individually. Some last minute words of advice. Lovey looks nervous as Harves lays down the law. Make sure you're playing ball work when you go out there to warm up. Ball, ball work at ground level. Yes, ball work at ground level. Start to annoy you a bit more. You know so you should head down, play footy. I'll get Solomon to go down with you early in here. Yep. Make sure you're doing the things we spoke about in the video. Make sure you find whoever you're playing on, whether it's Wingen, whether it's Walsh, whether it's Kingsley. Make sure you find their weakness and then you work them over like you have over the last couple of weeks. Not all about you kicking five today, it's no, about not. you creating five. The intensity is building as the warm-up officially starts with Quinny in control. The siren's not far away. You can't help but get butterflies. That nervous anticipation of the unknown, the climax of the build-up, a week's worth of preparation. And then it's time, as Lloyd leads them onto the big stage for Saturday Night Football. Kepler says hello to Mr. Treadray, the siren sounds to get the game underway, and the Bombers get a dream start, giving them hope for the first three quarters. A goal by Nathan Lovett Murray after the three-quarter time siren gives the Bombers the lead again going into the last quarter. The dream upset win looks a reality. But there was to be no fairy tale tonight. Despite the great optimism at three quarter time, the power has overrun the bombers. The hopes and game are over. It's a long walk up the race for what has quickly become a bleak excursion to Adelaide. <laughs> Apart from Quinny occasionally barking instructions, no one else is talking. It's a stunned playing group cool down together. <laughs> The medical team also quietly goes about its business, talking to each player individually, assessing the damage. For what was such a big build-up for Kepler, the night has ended horribly. Not only didn't he last on Treadray, he's got a badly bruised knee and can hardly walk. The coach then takes the players into the small dressing room. There's no ramping and raving. Sheeds is measured. He has the attention of everyone in the room and tries to give reasons for the loss. As they all emerge, there's certainly more questions than answers as to what went wrong. And then there's those that feel helpless, just wishing they were involved in the night. It's then back to the team bus, but the players struggle to work their way through the fans, desperate for an autograph or a photo. They're still popular with the supporters, even after a loss, even on enemy territory. After a half-hour ride, the bus pulls back into the hotel and slowly they emerge. 
the nervous anticipation of the game when they hopped aboard in the afternoon has been replaced with the numbing feeling of a lost opportunity as they all went back to the hotel lobby. This time, the bomber's base looks more like a hospital ward. Players either receive treatment or get stuck into their latest serve of pasta. The harsh reality of the loss is starting to sink in as they reflect on what might have been. Running on the roof of the hotel seems a long way away from last night's action at Amy Stadium. The players look like the walking wounded during the compulsory recovery session, with bandages on limbs almost everywhere you look. It's noticeable even in the short time since the players arrived for the session that the mood has lifted significantly. It's all part of not dwelling on last night's disappointment, but instead already looking to the next battle. It almost starts as soon as that game ends, where are we warming down or are we warming up for next week? You know, so you could probably debate it either way. That's what makes this job so exciting. I mean, it just keeps on coming and every week's different. You don't know what you're going to get and footy is such an unpredictable game. You know, um, you know we lost last night. We've got uh, six days for retribution. After the water action, it's either time for breakfast or if you've got some sore spots, an opportunity to be assessed by the medical team. The pool deck looks more like a doctor's waiting room, with ice and bandages almost a prerequisite if you want to be examined. Yep, yep, it's Ben. It's Ben. Definitely Ben, yes. Yeah. Yeah, Inside, over the breakfast table, the medical team assess every player. And it's confirmed Rioli is in trouble with a calf strain. Rioli. Right lateral right, calf. Right lateral right calf. We will do an MRI on him because he's an unusual injury. You don't usually strain the calf in that position. But Dino's not the only one struggling. The team go through each player one by one. Jason Johnson. Uh, he has got knocked around a bit and he's just carrying a tight Achilles that he mentioned for the first time last night. Oh, it's a minor right calf call. He's got, um, he's got his foot stomped sideways as someone landed on it, so that's going to be a two, three hundred kilogram force. From listening into the briefing that takes nearly half an hour, it's obvious there were a number of players last night playing well short of 100% fit. They see guys running around on the field and they, and they just assume that they're fit and well and feeling good, which most of them are, but the amount of maintenance and, and sort of fine tuning stuff, type stuff that's done is, is quite extensive and there's very few, I suppose there's very few players on the list who aren't getting something specific done most, most weeks, most games. So with the recovery session and breakfast finished, it's time to go home. Time to start contemplating Essendon's next assignment against the Bulldogs. As John Quinn said, preparations have already started for next Sunday's match as the ongoing battle for glory continues in the world of AFL football. It just never stops.